This video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. So I'll bring you in here through our main door to our milk house, which is slightly open. The dog must have let herself in. There's our milk tank. Again, if you'd like a full milk house tour, you can watch the milk house tour video. So this is the dairy barn. Piper wants to say hello. Hi. Sit. Good girl. Hi. You think my mitts are toys? So I think what I'll do is I'll just start at one end of the barn and give you a tour through to the end. So here we have our close-up dry cow pen here. So it's a straw pack. There is concrete underneath it. So these cows will be having their babies probably within the next two weeks. They have a water access there, a water access at the back corner and a water access there. Sorry, my finger's taking the focus there. And there's headlocks to lock them up for any need we may have. And then coming over from there is our special needs pen. We have nobody in here. That's kind of a good thing. Um, but when the cow has their calf in this pen, then we move them over to this pen with their calf. Then they can go through to the milking robots and be on their own nicely in the pack. Or if a cow is sick or there's some red flag, within the cow that the robot detects, then the robot will sort the cow into the special needs pen in there. She'll be there for when we arrive next and are able to treat her accordingly or take care of her accordingly. Sometimes the cow might have a sore foot, sore leg, then we just let them live in this straw pack for a few days until they've regained strength to join the rest of the herd. And then this is our bridge to get through to the robots or the other side of the barn without walking through the um, scrape alleys. So then I'll take you over here. There's all these sections here where only people can get through. Cows can't fit through these. We haven't had it happen yet. So then we have, this is one robot, our second robot, and this is our robot pit. We opted out of having a robot room because we have tunnel ventilation in our barn. All those fans at the end of the barn and there's inlets in the ceilings, little squares in the ceilings. That's our ventilation and it's all automated. It's called tunnel ventilation. So when you have a room in the middle of a tunnel ventilated barn, then it really affects the flow of air. So we wanted to have as minimal walls as possible. There are no cows in the robots. It's a very quiet time. This is our, they call them boxes. This is the, our box number one. So this box is the box that we train all the cows on because they can go through. This is the one they have access to get to from the straw pack pen I just showed you. Or also we have a, like a, it's called a fetch area here, which I'll show you after where we can kind of lock the cows in there so they have to go through the robot in order to get over to the feed. And then this robot is just totally free access. Not all the cows even go to use this one because some of them, since they're all trained on this one, some of them haven't caught on the fact that they can use this one. Here is like all the electrical that goes into the robots. And then behind these um, barriers is, is where the milk all goes and flows. And then there's another panel here that can open up and um, you can access some electrical to the robot. While the cows are in the robots, they get a special pellet. It's kind of an incentive to get to the robot. So that gets into this feed bowl. It's empty now and could use a good cleaning, but that this is the feed bowl of the robot. And then they'll exit through here. And this is the gate that can open this way if needed and sort the cow into the straw pack or else they come along here and go straight to the try to avoid this patty straight to the feed bunk. Hello. Hello. Did you come to say hi? Eddie and I chose to go with milking robots for a few different reasons and I'll just highlight a few main ones. The first is that we were starting from scratch here. We were not renovating anything. We were doing a whole new build. So if you compare, which Eddie did, he's a numbers guy. If you compare cost of building a barn with a holding area for a parlor, so an area of the barn that the cows all group into, or maybe a group of cows group into before going to get milked, then you need more square footage in your barn. Whereas the footprint to put robots in your barn, barn is much smaller. It's 
smaller even than the area you need for the parlor alone. So cost to build, um, including the cost of the robots, it just kind of made sense to go with the robots for us without getting too nitty gritty into that. Another reason is Eddie and I really desired to be able to do this by ourselves. If we had a parlor, we would likely need to hire on help to have someone to help with milking. We probably could have done it by ourselves, but you, we are very much believers in you can do everything, but you can't do everything well. So we wanted to have the milking robots, which totally eliminates the physical job of milking the cows from our daily routine so that we can manage the whole barn by ourselves. Eddie or I can do chores on our own pretty much solely. So that's kind of nice. We can kind of tag team that or we just most often either Eddie does it all by himself and I'm separate with the kids or we just as a family collectively come out to do chores. So that eliminates dealing with hired help. It's not a secret that hired help is getting harder and harder to find these days. So we're very blessed to be able to kind of avoid that and be able to manage everything on our own. And the third reason, which was not necessarily a deciding factor for us, but definitely was something we considered was the flexibility of robots. So with robots, the cows are being milked through the entire 24 hour period of a day. So you're not, you're not restricted to be back at the farm at a specific time every day. However, Eddie and I very much are. We are really, we really thrive on routine as the cows do. So we're at the same time, pretty much every day, feeding the calves, doing the feeding, like everything else, all of our other chores. And there are still chores to do, despite the fact that we have milking robots. <laughs> All of our other chores, we are very um, scheduled on those, so we're kind of back on the farm anyway. He's following me. Are you in heat? There's a cow on the robot now, I'll show you that. Two cows in the robots, one in that one, and one in that one. So this one's almost done. And the screen shows you the cow's number, 1240. Her name is Lorene. She's now given 83% of what the robot expects her to give, so the robot's constantly teaching itself about what, what this cow should be giving. This quarter of the udder and this quarter of the udder are still milking, but this quarter and this quarter are done. She's been in the box for five minutes and four, five seconds. You can put the robot in manual mode so that you can put the uh, inflations on manually, which is a feature that we absolutely love about these two robots. Tells you how many kilograms she's given so far. What else? It'll tell you which cows um, need to go in. Just a minute. It'll tell you which cows have just been in. These are all the cows that have just been in and how much milk they gave, the time they were in. So this is the, the other robot. She's almost done as well. Her first, the front left quarter is done. So you can see that the front left quarter is done. Her last quarters are still milking. Shantree. Yes? I'm almost done. Our scrape alleys are scraped out with automatic manure scrapers here. This one is running, they run very slowly and scrape up all the manure. This one just started, so there's not a ton, but by the end of the tour, I'll show you how much it has collected. And this is called a crossover where the cows can cross over from that side of the barn to this side of the barn. We have a three row sand freestyle barn. The cows can lay in that row and then there's two rows here and then the headlocks. So we have one, two, three and a half crossovers. So we have to shovel all the manure off of these two or three times a day to keep them clean for the cows. And then this is where they have their water access. This bar here is at the end of the crossover, which we can put up if we wanna bring, so we have a cow over here that we wanna bring over to the robot. So we would walk them over to the next crossover that I'll show you. This is our breeder, Devin, um, down this way and then into this fetch area. So now this is the fetch area, so the cows will walk through the saloon gate here and go into the fetch area, and as I mentioned before, the only way to get out of it is through the robot. So that's how we train them, to get used to the robot, and it works well for us. 
Hi guys, it's uh, Ed, Lauren's husband. I am going to just quick show you the stables where our milk cows are. Lauren thought she had this part recorded when she was doing the walk around the other day and uh, realized she didn't have it recorded. So anyways, this area is where our milk cows are. Uh, we have 80 stables, 80 sand bedded stables. They start here, that's our fetch area that she just went over. At the end, another crossover. So these cows lay on sand and underneath the sand is I think sand from the sand hill at the back of the farm, which we used in the whole barn under the concrete and they packed it, poured concrete on top. So there's that sand, which has a bit of stone in it that you never want the cows to get to because um, you don't want them to be on stones or kick stones out, but that's probably a couple feet under. And then below that'll just be clay. We bed the stalls up every 10 days. I do, raking to get rid of that stuff morning and evening and that seems to keep them quite comfortable view down this side of the barn this is her the mama of the red calf i showed you her name is reese's cup she's our chocolate milk cow she's pretty friendly she's probably the friendliest cow in the barn heading out over for a drink so now I'll take you over to our far off dry cow area, which is at the end of the barn. I'm just right beside it and just going through here. This person walk through here. I could have opened the gate, but I didn't. So this has 11 stables, this area here, which is for dry cows that are not close to having their baby. So we dry cows off, so give them a break from milking for about two months before they have their, their next calf. They come hang out in this area, they get a different type of feed. They get some different company. They get to just hang out until we move them to that very end of, or front of the barn that I started the tour at to have their calf. So this is another crossover. Also water, they have another water access here, which as you can see the dog uses. I wonder if she knows how to get more water. What you doing? So there's two stables here, face to face with another two, and then seven stables along here. The uh, strap is clearly broken, but that'll be something on Eddie's to-do list, I'm sure. And this is our half crossover that I mentioned. So it's just, we could have put two more stalls here, but it was recommended by vets and other dairy experts to have two crossovers because you can get a bully cow who will just stand um, or even two bully cows that will just stand and block off this entire area and then you, if you have a timid cow that doesn't want to fight her way through she can end up stuck on this side and not able to get feed because they need to cross over here to get to the feed so it's always good to just have another way for the cows to get through just in case you have a bossy mama in here number 26 she is a heifer so eddie has brought her over here from the heifer barn so we'll do that too we'll bring heifers from the heifer barn over to this far off dry cow area to get used to this barn and these stalls and everything before they have their first calf so she's in here with some second third fourth time maybe not fourth our herd is pretty young second and third time mamas this is where all the poop goes when it's scraped the end of the barn eddie had these slats custom made up because we wanted to make sure they were close enough together that no kids could fall through, but big enough apart, far enough apart so that all the slop can get through. And it's flushed out with water, I believe, twice daily. And Eddie will have to give you the tour of all this equipment back here one day. But this all has to do with, this is our cool manure system. You can see this is all the manure that's been collected. And I just wanna show you this part here. Eddie also specifically designed this part. We don't want our kids to be able to get back there at all. So we have our cows and stalls up to here. Then we have some fencing and a gate. So the kids know that they can never go through this gate. We just open it, swing it, and then you can get back to this newer area. And I missed it, but this scraper just brought all the slop down into the grate here. And now it's moving back. And then that side will come forward next. So this is the manure equipment here. The manure gets blown through a pipe underground into our manure pit 
outside. So that's about it for our farm. I know this is a very small family dairy farm compared to many farms out there in the States. Kind of small even for what we see in our area in Ontario. But we're making it work. We love it and we're so happy you joined us for this tour. Thank you for supporting dairy. And